Okay, cool. Then let's start the session, uh, Shivam. If you don't mind, can you just scroll or change the screens for me? So, hi, good, good day, everyone. I know people have joined from different uh, locations. So, uh, good day. Hope you people are doing good. Uh, my my name is Mamta Mamta Jha. Me and Shivam work for the same firm, which is called as Tech Scalable. We work as a consulting and a cloud training firm. You can say we are into training from last one year. We have training experience of around seven years, but we have started our own company last year. Unfortunately, the Corona year, you can say. And we focus on cloud technologies, Azure, AWS, and Google. We also uh, work on private cloud like OpenStack, OpenShift, and all. We focus on DevOps technology, machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence, we pick up small consulting projects and we deliver training as well. So we have Microsoft certified trainers, we have Red Hat certified instructors with us. We also deliver training, me and Shivam deliver a lot of sessions and we have other trainers as well in our uh, company, those who deliver training for us. So this was a brief introduction about our company. Next speaker for today's session would be Shivam. And uh, Shivam is, uh, you can say, a guy who is expert in Azure, no doubt in it. He has done quite a few other cloud certifications as well. Uh, the space is pretty less to put Hollis certifications. They are huge in list. So we have just put a few number of certifications in the slide which you would be seeing. So he works as a full-time solution architect and trainer. We do a lot of consulting projects in Azure, GCP, and he is more into machine learning and AI these days. But Azure is something which he has started from the beginning, from last seven, eight years, from the time Azure is there in the market. Shivram is one of the person who has worked throughout the journey of Azure from the beginning. This is about Shivam's instruction, uh, introduction. And today we would be covering uh, few set of things like Shivam would be starting with basics of Azure. He would be telling us about Azure AD. We had a session a few days back on uh, in the beginning of Jan and there we had tried covering few topics which were related to Azure fundamental. We had covered about Azure AD and few basic things like regions, availability zones, region pairs and what is a resource group and etc. So he'll just quickly run through those things and our major focus today because we are trying to uh, say make people aware of Azure administrator course what all things they need to learn to become an Azure certified person and administrator role. So we are focusing on core Azure services today uh, like compute services, network services, storage services and database. But we would be doing a demo on Azure Compute Service. It holds a huge percentage in our Azure certification. So he would be doing a demo with respect to uh, creating virtual machine in a highly available and scalable environment. And it would be like a global distributed solution which he would be creating. And he would be showing us a demo with scale set, VM scale set and VM. He would also talk about uh, Azure container services like Azure Kubernetes service and ACI. He would talk about a little bit about app services as well. So when we do the demos and all, we want to discuss a few things about the certification track because a lot of times we get a question that I want to get certified as an Azure architect. So which particular course should I go and enroll for? So Azure Architect track constitutes of 104 or 204 plus 303 and 304. So 104 and 204 builds are base learning all the services from scratch and 303 and 304 gives us more into architecting and solutioning about the different types of uh, say scenarios which we get or use cases which we have. So we would pick up that Shivam would be explaining about the certification track, the role-based certification part. And at the end, we would open up the stage for Q&A. And uh, Hangouts in the end, we have some exciting offers for the people who would be there. We would be giving our Azure Fundamental course 
for free to the people those who would be joining and they are interested to learn Azure from the scratch. And we also have a training program about which we would be publicizing at the end. So I request everyone to hang out till the end to get the full, uh, to see the entire film, I would say. So that's all from my end. Uh, thanks, Shivam, for showing a lot of patience and you can take the stage. Thank you, Mamta. Thanks for the lovely introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me out. And uh, so what are we doing today? Let me just quickly summarize that for you. I think Mamta already uh, explained that part. So a couple of days back, uh, we did the first webinar on AZ900. And we basically covered the fundamentals of Azure platform, which was focusing towards AZ900. It was not exactly for the certification, uh, but we covered the fundamentals over there. And today we have the next uh, webinar in the same uh, learning path for you as I firmly believe that learning should be step by step. So today we will be focusing on 104, which is the administrator training. And we uh, won't be able to complete the entire training because that takes multiple days. However, we will be focusing on the major topics or the most important topics which we have. And one of that topic will be Azure Compute Services. And as part of that, we will have Azure Virtual Machine, VMs, and we will be doing some we will deploy one active active architecture uh, around that virtual machine right and whenever you have any question feel free to ask that in the chat window so i just wanted to start from here because in the previous session we talked about basics of azure i will summarize it for you i i understand that a lot of you are coming for the first time and you might not have been there in the previous webinar in the series which we are doing so in case uh, you are one of those who were there in the last session you will notice that my couple of slides will be overlapping with what we have covered in the previous session. So like core Azure architecture components, region pair, availability zone, resource group, and so on and so forth. So these things I will cover for others. And then once we have done these basics uh, as such, we will be focusing on the new topics, which will be aligned with the 104, right? So let's get started. So as you already know that I uh, prefer using whiteboard a lot and uh, just to give you a quick uh, summary of uh, what I have over here. So when you talk about Azure from the fundamental level, like uh, day number one, we basically have a couple of things over there. So first time when you purchase Azure or you get Azure subscription, you also get Active Directory along with it. And uh, so this is the Azure AD, which is IAM. RNT and access management, right? So as part of basics of Azure, you need to understand that we have subscriptions and these subscriptions can be part of another higher level uh, structure, which we have called as management group. So this is where I have management group over here. And these subscriptions can be in the same hierarchy over there like that, right? So these, these type of things we were discussing earlier. And what, when you work with subscriptions, what do you create inside that? The very first thing you need will be resource group. Resource group is the logical grouping of resources. So if I deploy something today, everything will be inside a couple of resource groups, which I will be having. So let's say I have, uh, maybe I have storage uh, databases over here, maybe storage over here, or maybe I create a couple of virtual machines or virtual networks over there and so on and so forth. So group of resources will be RG, resource group. So a pretty high level concept, but when you deploy, when you give rights with the help of Azure AD, how do we do that? We can give rights to people on multiple levels, right? You can give rights to people on management group level as well. We can give rights to people on subscription level as well. So this is subscription. And when I say people, those people I mean will be uh, these individuals who are there in the Active Directory. So we have the username and password over there in Azure AD. So just FYI, what is Azure AD? Azure AD is IAM, RNT and access management. We do authentication and authorization with that, RBAC, role-based access control, right? So uh, we also recommend, or Microsoft recommends that you give rights to people on uh, RG level, which is more manageable, more practical. We can also give rights to services or even uh, users on resource level. So four level of rights are there, management group level, subscription level, RG level, resource group level, or resource level. All, all four are possible. 
so all this will be the fundamentals as such which we have sort of discussed in the previous session just to summarize little bit uh, more about the regions i hope uh, you guys are aware in azure that we have region availability zone concept for example if i deploy my virtual machine or if i deploy something i'm not sure how many of you are aware of what is virtual machine uh, which i will take care of however uh, you can say sql database or any database which is there which is more widely known so imagine this is uh, this is where i have uh, east us region of microsoft azure and what are regions regions are basically uh, you can say uh, microsoft is having around 60 plus regions today and they are in 140 countries as such so let's say this is east us region of azure now in every region we will be having multiple data centers over there. So this is data center number one, two, and three. This, these are called as availability zones as such. So these are this is called as AZ1, availability zone one, availability zone two, availability zone three. These are data centers. And what is the distance between them? Approximately around, they are multiples of 10 miles like that. Multiples of 10 miles. So uh, like that. So today we will, when we will be doing our deployment, we will be talking about should we use availability zones or what should we use for high availability like to make something high available what options do we have and how do we do it right so that that thing comes into picture now this basically summarizes all the basics which we have talked about in the previous session and if i take you back and we just quickly uh, build on top of it we have azure accounts subscription resource groups and resources over there apart from this what other core architectural components do we have we have region region pairs availability zone azure resources resource group resource manager arm or azure resource manager subscription and management group let me uh, give you a couple of uh, insights into region pair check this out so for example uh, those of you who are interested in the architecting session uh, which we'll be conducting and the webinar will also come up in the future so keep an eye uh, keep an eye on the whatsapp group or the linkedin group which we have so what do we have microsoft actually combines multiple regions together so east us is paired with west us so this is over here east us and west us so similarly we have multiple regions in every geographies which are paired together the purpose of them will be in terms of how do we uh, in, in in terms of uh, dr or disaster recovery or in case of creation of uh, let's say active passive scenario or primary secondary scenario so we create the primary uh, infrastructure in let's say east us and they will be one failover infrastructure for that which will create in the paired region which is west us so these these regions are paired with azure backbone network and they have furthermore sla based features over there however this is called as region pairs like paired regions used for bcdr purpose and many other purposes as well apart from this now there is uh, i i'm not sure how many of you have been working on azure since the very starting itself but uh, we used to have one thing called as asm long back 2013 uh, 14 in in at, at that time uh, azure service management uh, or the old Azure portal or old way in which Azure uh, deployments were done. Microsoft in the starting was focusing more on platform as services. They were not focusing much on other things. However, down the line, they also realized that infrastructure service is also very important and we have now serverless and many more things. However, uh, they changed their deployment from ASM into ARM as such. And you might have heard about ARM templates and so on and so forth. So, uh, resource manager is basically one deployment model which Microsoft has. So whenever the, if, if I give you a quick introduction into it, let's say this is the user, that's you. And you use uh, maybe Azure portal to do something with Microsoft. You want to deploy something over there. So you go and you click in the portal. So behind that we have fabric controller. So this is where fab, Azure fabric controller or orchestrator of Azure comes into picture. And behind them we have resource providers like compute resource provider, network resource provider, storage resource provider, and so on and so forth. These are services which deploy some particular type of infrastructure for us. So if you want to create virtual machine, you go and you click in the portal. But what happens? Finally, compute resource provider, network resource provider, and storage resource provider, 
will be triggered and they will be doing things for you on the data center level. So this is where I have East US with me, imagine like that. So this entire architecture is called as ARM model as such. And we have templates also, resource manager and template, the help of templates, we can do deployments. So this is one slide where I have uh, listed most of the Azure services in one place for you. We have the platform as services as well. We have infrastructure as service. So you can notice that we have compute services on one, one corner here. And today we will be focusing mostly on the uh, virtual machine scale set and we will focus on virtual machine. So those who are targeting the certification or those who want to get started with the Azure platform, today you will be able to cover one portion of the certification. So you will get that much, you can say, marks in the certification if you want to call it like that. Or if you are just here for the knowledge purpose, that's even amazing. And we will simply learn a lot of things. So compute services, we have virtual machine, container instances are there. Kubernetes, you might have heard about. Uh, Azure batch instances are there. Apart from this, we also, as part of infrastructure service, we have storage services in Azure. Blob storage, queue storage, file storage, disk. Network services will be there. Virtual network, load balancer, DNS, express route, traffic manager, gateways, and application load balancers, application gateways. So all of them create IES solutions. As part of uh, platform as services, we have a huge array of services. And uh, you can see that databases are there, uh, cognitive services, AI services are there, IoT services, big data solution, machine learning, stream analytics, uh, developer solutions. You can deploy things with Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio DevOps comes into picture. Service Fabric is the, uh, you can say, microservice-based solution which we have. So all of this creates uh, platform as services. Uh, so there are many more services in Azure, which I don't have in the screen over here. So if you don't see something, you can just uh, assume uh, they are in the, we can check them out in the portal itself, right? For example, serverless and so and so forth. A lot of things are there. So today we'll be focusing on the compute core Azure services. And one of the core Azure service, service which we have to focus will be the compute service. And uh, uh, today will be mostly on uh, virtual machine as such. However, we will also talk about little about app services, about ACI, about Kubernetes, and uh, we'll talk about networking, storage, and databases, right? So let's get started. Let's start from somewhere. And the very first thing which we are doing will be compute services. So what will be compute services? Whenever you build any new application or deploy existing application into the cloud, Azure Compute Services, they provide the infrastructure that you require for running your applications, right? So what type of services do we have? We have VMs, we have app services and so on and so forth. So check this out. The very first thing you can create will be virtual machine. Both Linux and Windows virtual machines are possible. For example, this can be, let's say, Windows machine, our 2016 data center. It will be having a couple of uh, uh, type of disk over there so we can have so whatever you do on premise the same thing you can do in the cloud itself right so you have operating system disk you have some temporary drives which you which are used for caching purpose we have data disk with us so let's say this is my e drive and that's my f drive and so and so forth so various type of drives can be there uh, inside this operating system is installed those who are more aligned with uh, client os you can think that we have uh, windows 10 over there this is server operating system. You can have that as well. Now, whenever we talk about virtual machine, the licensing will be, everything is pay as you go in the cloud, right? You only pay for what you really use in that point in time. So if you want a 16 GB RAM machine for some purpose, you can deploy that. You can simply start using it. If you want to vertically scale it up, you can do that. So I can, uh, let's say this, initially it was having 16 GB RAM. Now I, uh, let's say vertically scaled it and now it is having 32 GB RAM, right? So with one quick restart, it will have the more resources which are allocated to it. So whenever we talk about computing, scaling also comes into picture, like either horizontal or vertical in nature. Just FYI, vertical is what we just talked about, giving more resources to the same machine. And horizontal scaling is what I will show you afterwards. And which basically means having more instances of the same uh, service deployed. So if I create another machine over here, and this is identical copy of the previous one, 
so this is basically horizontal scaling like that so iaas first solution will be we have azure, azure virtual machines over there we will be going into virtual machines a little more uh, i have a couple of demos for you and demos are pretty long enough like 30 to 45 minutes long demos so for now i'm just putting virtual machine on one side and i just want to cover the other services which we will not be focusing that much in today's session so the second service which comes to mind will be app services right so now if you are aware of platform as services pass solutions app services where you deploy your websites right so imagine you want to deploy your website one thing which you can do is you can deploy that inside vm over here that's the web app or website right now let me just say website over there right or application what else i can do i can also deploy that in platform as service solution so you see this i now i'm creating this dotted line because we don't have to manage the operating system over there everything is managed by the cloud service provider so inside that we deploy our websites over there so this is called as app so this is part of uh, uh, you can say uh, web app is part of app services we also have logic app over there mobile app backend uh, an api app which can be created as part of app services so they are pass solutions don't have to manage the backend you can simply push your code over there and this is your website which is running and it is available throughout from throughout the world anyone can access that everything is possible we can do ssl binding over there you can have uh, let's say staging environment created as such you can scale it up you can uh, uh, you can say uh, vertically scale it or practically more horizontally scale that and all those things right so apart from these two solutions like app services in azure which is platform as service or as part of uh, vm which is infrastructure service we have container solutions also when you want to run your workload you can run your workload in containers as well so when we talk about container solutions two solutions will be there which you can go for first solution will be azure kubernetes services azure kubernetes services will be the will be full fledged orchestrator you can have uh, uh, auto scaling vertical scaling horizontal scaling pod scaling node scaling uh, and so on and so forth so this is how you can say a two node aks cluster will look like and we have the master node over here master node in azure is free of cost you don't pay for it they they give you uh, they maintain it for you and this is where i have my nodes or virtual machines as such so this is node or vm so in kubernetes what do we do these are, this is called a container orchestrator and here we will be having another logical box inside that called as pod and inside pod is where your containers will be running so this is where i have the docker container and you can say maybe maybe my website or my machine running model or anything which is deployed over there so this is docker over there like that so now kubernetes is one of the location where um, which we generally use in production as such however if you come to me and say that shivam i am just looking for some location where i just i don't want auto scaling i don't want vertical auto scaling i don't want horizontal auto scaling um, i am not looking for full fledged orchestration i am looking for basically uh, just one location where i can host my containers can you give me that location so that location will be azure container instances so to explain container instances you can imagine that the clusters the back end clusters are managed by azure platform and we are just we just have to push our containers over there so this is aci azure container instance and this is where i have my docker container and inside the docker container i have my website running and we don't get all the functionalities which we get in aks in aci so we uh, it we de it depends on uh, the customer requirement but generally aci may or may not be used in production to the extent which we use aks it depends on many factors but generally like that so these are the container services which we have and i just want to so whatever questions you have guys please put that in the chat window we will talk about vms a little more however let me cover other things now as part of net networking services in azure cloud we will be having multiple things in azure like uh, if i put it here 
you can connect see virtual networks are basically your networking is the core or the glue without which nothing else will work you have to make sure that things communicate with each other maybe those things are in azure or maybe you want to have a hybrid network or cross cloud network you want to have a wide area network any type of network which you want to create so in azure we have collection of services which can do that for you so you can have connectivity services which will connect you in one way or another secondly we have protection services application protection services where uh, yeah okay so where we basically have for example how do we secure the network with the help of network security group firewalls application firewalls or some private virtual network endpoints third will be like delivery services for example when the customer is globally distributed how or uh, how will that customer be getting access of my application like for example you might have heard about cdn before whenever you watch any movie in netflix or whenever you watch any video in youtube so as mamta is already telling it to someone that this recording will be in youtube so imagine youtube will be having cdn network their own content delivery network as such and whenever you click on the front end the data will be cached into one of the cdn location and from there it will be served so if frequent queries are there or repeated customers or clients are trying to hit the same video from some location data will be served from the cdn location it will not come from the data source so it improves the turnaround time the data loads faster the video buffers faster and so on and so forth so all those services in azure are part of adn or application delivery network right we have content delivery network azure front door application gateway load balancer so today in the demo we will be creating load balancers we will be creating uh, uh traffic managers if you are not aware of it don't worry we will be doing it uh we will be serving some content to you and i will share the links in the chat you can try it out what we are doing fourth type of services will be the network services the monitoring services sorry where how do you monitor it for example you have a huge workload running in the cloud and uh, something is not working the developers are uh, let's say saying that okay the application is not talking to the database or the database is not available or the customer is facing a lot of turnaround time or basically there is a lot of latency the vpn which you created from on premise to cloud is no longer working so all those things can go wrong so we have these monitoring solutions network watcher express route Mon watcher uh, express route monitor or we have azure monitor azure monitor is an umbrella term it contains multiple type of monitoring services as part of it so using that we can monitor the cloud so they they create core networking services as part of core storage services we have a uh, storage account or data lakes these two options are there which you might or might not have worked with before just to uh, give you fyi in azure we have the storage account this is storage account as such over here right so now storage account provides us multiple type of services we have container services or blob services over there this is called as container right and in containers what do we have we have blobs binary large object uh, container is basically not the docker container it's basically a location where you keep unstructured data images video files it can actually honestly store anything however other services which storage account provides will be queues we also have file share over there you can create smb file shares and we can also have uh, uh, basically key value pairs tables inside storage account so these are 500 terabytes in size 500 tb like that that's the upper limit of one storage account you can create many more however uh, that depends on the uh, infrastructure or the, or the project as such but uh, uh, you can create around 250 more in one uh, region and uh, right and we have around 60 regions in azure so you can imagine the huge amount of data which we can store there now apart from uh, storage account we also have data lake option adls and today the the one which is which is there is called as gen2 uh, adls gen2 azure data lake storage and azure data lake storage is basically compatible with hdfs it's not really hdfs but it is compatible with hdfs like that so with the help of whenever you have any big data solutions you use you keep your data inside data lake right so imagine this is my big data compute cluster hadoop cluster or maybe spark cluster databricks cluster like that so 
I might be loading my data over there and some transformation might be going on inside this one. And whenever the transformations are done, you might be writing output into various locations, maybe back in the data lake or maybe you are writing the data in some structured location like that. So now just FYI, data lake is having no upper limit. There is no upper limit of it. You can keep as much amount of data as you want over there. And this is one of the go to solution which we have for uh, big data analytics, right? Now, uh, so this covers basically my uh, the slide which I have over here. Queues. Now, uh, what are the use case of queues? If you want to decouple application together and you want to independently scale the front end and the back end as such or the web role or the worker role, then we have queues in middle, right? So storage account queues are uh, pretty, you can say, uh, pretty can be pretty big as well. You can create giant queues which are 500 terabytes in size. One of the queue can, one message can be, you can say 64 KB in size, but the entire queue can be very big. It can be till 500 terabytes. And uh, just FYI, FIFO is not uh, is not here. Uh, for FIFO, we have more solutions in Azure. And table storage is basically key value pair. And uh, you keep your data, you can get one value or you can also get the entire row from it if you give the correct partition key and the row key over there. Blob storage is the go-to solution for storing unstructured data as we we're just talking about. File share is SMB file share. And uh, if you uh, if you have, uh, for example, if we both are on the same network and I create one folder and I just make it publicly accessible on the network, you can, you can find it. So you can create file storage in Azure cloud and you can mount those locations with the, uh, basically your, uh, you can say uh, in, in this manner, let's say I have VMs in the cloud and this is my laptop right now. Somebody else's laptop. I have another VM over here. I want one shared location. This will be that file share and we can mount it like that. It becomes hybrid in nature, hybrid shared location, more like OneDrive, but not that sophisticated. Now, when we talk about disk storage, the virtual machines which you are creating, the virtual machine needs disk to be there, right? You need OS disk, C drive, maybe D drive, E, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, right? Drives are required. So those VHDs, virtual hard disk, can be stored as part of disk storage or the disk which you create are called as disk storage as such. Right, so this creates the uh, storage services and uh, then we talk about the, the database services as such, right? So we have pretty interesting solutions in Azure. You can create Cosmos database and you can create uh, SQL database, Azure SQL. You can create MySQL as well, or you can create Postgres over there. So this is where we have that, uh, the symbol. And if I explain all of that, and I may have covered this in the previous webinar, however, just giving a little bit of FYI. So in Cosmos database, what happens? These are globally distributed databases. So it's not that in the starting, we have so many endpoints, but you with one click or with a couple of clicks, two, three clicks, you can create these multiple endpoints. So let's say this is in East US over here. That's West US as such. This is Southeast Asia and we can put Japan over there, any region in Japan. So uh, these are Cosmos DB endpoints. So the applications and the customers, this is US customers are pointing here. The applications in West US are pointing there and the applications in Japan is pointing there. And in Southeast Asia, these applications are pointing to the Southeast Asia endpoint. And uh, all these Cosmos database endpoints will be syncing with each other in real time, right? So this is how Cosmos DB looks like. Now, Con Cosmos database is non-relational. It's not a relational database. It basically, it has multiple modes in which it keeps the data. But one of the mode, one of the most popular mode is document mode. JSON documents are there and that's how the data is, is stored. Now, Cosmos database is very popular. And when do we use it? When we real, re, uh, need those distributed database requirement is there, then we basically use it, right? That's where it comes into picture. Apart from this, we also have relational database Azure SQL with us. And uh, Azure SQL is platform as service, right? So you create logical SQL server. So let's say logical 
SQL server. Now, why, why do we call this logical? Because anyways, it doesn't physically exist. This is basically a logical boundary as such. So that's Azure SQL platform as service solution from Microsoft, right? So inside that logical SQL server, we can create those databases. So this is my one database and the biggest size of SQL database, which you can create will be 100 terabytes called as hyperscale database, pretty uh, big in size. And Azure SQL is very interesting. It contains lots and lots of uh, DR backup solutions, which are inbuilt over there. For example, we have uh, we have sort of business critical uh, failover solution, which in which uh, the Azure pass solution can fail over to another endpoint in case the primary endpoint goes down within five seconds. So if my East US endpoint goes down, it can fail over to the another endpoint and uh, that will be just five seconds, right? So that's really useful for us to create uh, HA solutions. Apart from this, we have MySQL as well, which is available as platform as service and Postgres also in Azure cloud. And uh, whenever required, we use all these databases. So now these topics will be, you can say we will be covering these topics another day where we will go the, into depth into those databases and so on and so forth. So please uh, keep an eye on the uh, LinkedIn group or the WhatsApp group. So you can come to know when we are doing the next webinar, but today we'll be talking about virtual machine and this is where we will be hitting more in depth how things work over there and we will be creating active active scenario, right? So first thing is the virtual machine followed by virtual machine scale set. So what are we doing before I jump into the architecture which we are deploying? Uh, let me just give you a little more understanding of uh, what is VM or what basically on a very low level VM looks like in their data center. So this is one virtual machine, let's say Windows, uh, maybe Windows 10, right? And uh, that's the host operating system or host or the server over there. So imagine this is one server which is there behind the scenes and that's one VM which is running inside it, virtual machine. There will be more as well, right? So let's say this is another virtual machine. This is having Windows 2016 data center, the OS, server OS. Now, uh, just F, so this is a server over here, right? Just FYI, uh, since a long time in Azure, it was not possible to have dedicated host. Dedicated host means that uh, in this scenario, in the diagram, so imagine the customer number one, the green customer is having this uh, VM, right? And the second customer is the purple customer. He, uh, he or she is having that other VM over there. So in the back end, it was on the same server, right? It's not that uh, we have any security issue over here. It's not that if somebody runs any heavy workload, your resources will go down, nothing like that. Whatever you pay for, you always get. But dedicated host concept was not there. Everything was shared at the back end, the infrastructure. But recently, Microsoft has also uh, released dedicated host as such and in in that scenario uh, in the set of servers only your machines will be there so this is only a uh, green customer uh, the one which is the green one only his or her machines are there uh, in this physical server that's just fyi uh, it's it's now possible now okay check this out that's my c drive uh, and let's say d drive and i have one more e drive over here so uh, in Azure virtual machine, uh, so this is a C drive, we call this operating system disk as such. Any other disk is called as data disk and D drive is called as temporary disk or there is one temporary disk as such. It may or may not be the D drive, but if you create a default, it will be the one. Now the concept over here is that the D drive, D drive will always be in the local, uh, uh, you can say this is D dot virtual hard disk VHD and what do i have over here this is the local storage of server storage of server over there like that right so this is very near to the machine uh, let me say what are the good points near to the virtual machine so we, and we use this for caching purpose as such and where is this os operating system disk or where is the data disk data we have options now so you can put them in storage account as well so this is my data disk going in the storage account that's e dot virtual hard disk and then that's my 
OS disk also going in the same location. So you can see it's going from there. And this is C.VHD, virtual hard disk, like that. So if you keep your disk inside the storage account, these type of disks are basically called as unmanaged disk. Unmanaged. So let's say unmanaged over there. So unmanaged by Azure, you have to manage the storage account. We have upper limits also. For example, it's recommended that you don't keep more than 40 disk in one storage account because uh, doesn't matter how scalable the cloud is. There is always technical upper limits which will hit get hit. So we don't keep more than 40 disk in one storage account. So that that became uh, you can say people gave feedback and Microsoft always listened to the feedback. So what have they done? You there is no dependency now to have any storage account. You can also have your disk created and those type of disk are called as managed disk. So you can create e.vhd and c.vhd. So difference between managed and unmanaged disk will be in terms of that. Uh, do you manage your storage account or not? If you go for managed disk over here, these are managed by the, the backend is managed by cloud platform. You don't have to manage the storage account as such. So these are the disk. Apart from this, there is no other difference. Don't think that managed disk is uh, something better or unmanaged is better. But it is recommended that these days when you create your VMs, go for managed option so you don't have to uh, maintain all that extra storage um, and you may be having one vm and one storage or maybe one storage might be shared among multiple vms it becomes bottleneck to manage the storage account so manage disk is something which is recommended today now what happens if something goes down it should be very evident you might have heard about uh, live migration in microsoft world so let's say this is my server number two so if something goes wrong maybe this server is 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 let's say found to be uh, crashing or something may go wrong with it the vms simply move over there you see this this is live migration like that you migration in the world don't get confused with the word migration as such this is literally uh, in vm where we call this v motion like uh, you may even not even come to know that something went wrong but your machine will go into another host at the back end right and you already have the disk which are outside so you can feel that over the network these disks will be again attached the only catch which you have to remember is that the d uh, drive or the temporary drive will not be moved and you will get a new d drive over here or the temporary disk will be refreshed or uh, you can say it's new uh, now so what is the purpose of d drive we don't keep any data which we want to persist over there the data which you want to persist always goes into data disk like that we create we create them right and uh, in d drive we put swap files page files or any temporary caching data which is not required but the good thing about temporary disk is because it is very near to the uh, virtual machine on the same local host it is very fast over there right so you can use for caching purpose now let me take you to the uh, demo which i have and check this out what are we deploying as we were talking about that we have multiple type of uh, solutions for scaling we will be using all of them right so check this out so we will be creating now i am i don't have any predisposition right now i am starting from scratch itself right so i will be creating one virtual machine and this one i will be doing from gui from the azure portal for second we will use script right one uh, we can combine like that so first virtual machine we'll do from portal and for the second virtual machine, I will be using one uh, script, which I have PowerShell script. And this again will be same 2016 data center. And the and as part of high availability, we will be putting them into one concept called as availability set. So you see this blue box, which I'm creating over here. Just hang in with me. So this is the blue box. And this blue box is called as availability set over here right so at the back end what will happen if i just take you back to the availability set concept uh, at the back so this is availability set not the zone right so at the back end it means that basically uh, so let's say the region is east us so this is east us over here and we know that there are three data centers over there availability zone one availability zone two and availability zone three 
but when we talk about availability set concept so this is called as az availability zone right and what is availability set this is one data center concept so at the back end what will happen you will have two server rack i i have only two machines so two server rack for now so let's say this is server rack 1 right and this is server rack 2 so what happens in availability set if i configure both these machines in one they will be in different server rack so you can see that this is my vm number 1 and they this is where i have vm number 2 so machines are distributed in different hardware so even if the hardware fails one of my instance will still be running so i will have high availability if i create more instances over there it will be even more high available so ha becomes more locally high available so we will be using this local ha solution over here on the left hand side to create two machines one from portal one from script and then we will be putting one load balancer on top of it so this is where i have azure load balancer or network lb so let's say azure load balancer or network load balancer right and we will be configuring are uh, these both load balancer uh, so these both machines to be part of that load balancer so this is the first leg of my architecture and everything will be in, in east us once we have done that we will be doing something in another part of the world or let me say this one is southeast southeast asia uh, let me put it like that c server in southeast asia the other infrastructure which will be deploying will be in east us that's where we will be using availability set so that's the first thing which i am doing two vms one from portal one from powershell one load balancer couple of configuration uh, around that and you guys uh, might have already guessed that everything will be in in some resource group so we will create new resource group and we will name it very properly for example southeast asia resource group or uh, us resource group and so on and so forth so let's go to the azure portal and do all this So just give me a second let me find my azure portal and uh, we will start configuring all this so what have i done uh, in the portal i have simply opened a couple of tabs so there is a lot of infrastructure which needs to be deployed so i have couple of tabs over here and let me just quickly refresh this one it was not responding and i have the terminal open in one of them this is called as cloud shell it is basically at the back end it's a uh, it's a linux vm and you get the interface of that in the browser so from here i will be running the powershell commands right so couple of tabs are open and i also require uh, let's say notepad so let me put this notepad over here oh it open in my secondary screen so let me bring it on this side and uh, let me just quickly arrange my screen so i will be able to look at your chart as well in the meantime okay so the very first thing which i am doing i'll create two resource group one rg for us infrastructure and one rg for southeast asia so we can do it from the gui as well and i will show it from both the location so let me copy the script before i show the gui one okay so i just copy the script and i just run it over here let's say okay i think some glitch in the glitch in the powershell it was overlapping with the previous one i think with a quick restart that should be resolved so what have we done and if i take you to the resource group option over here we have basically created two resource group which should pop up here any second east us rg and southeast asia rg in east us rg uh, in southeast asia rg is the one which we are using first where we will deploy two vms and one uh, load balancer over there right how can you do this manually just click on the new option and once you click on the new option you can give any name from here and uh, give your location we have all these locations listed you can see and just click on review and create after that So once you have created either from the script or either from GUI, just click on the RG, and I want to create virtual machine first, right? One virtual machine, and this one will will be the one which I have on the left hand side. Uh, we can name it as VM one, right? Like that. 
so let's click on uh, you can click on add from here you literally have the option on the left hand side as well you can once you get comfortable with azure do it from there and windows 2016 data center is what i'm looking for so the option is here i'll simply click on it and uh, now we have to give it some name and other details so this will be inside so the, the subscription i have is over here msdn subscription and the resource group is southeast asia resource group which is what i am expecting it to what i want it to be in uh, you can change it as well if you want but right now let's keep it there and the vm name let me put it here let's call this vm load balancer southeast asia vm1 and so all of you can follow i'll just put it here lb uh, southeast asia vm1 like that right now uh, and the location let's go for southeast asia you can select the regions from here right now availability option there are two options we just talked about availability set and availability zones both are there availability set is one data center concept or everything will be in different hardware but different server rack in the same data center availability zone will be like everything will be in southeast asia but in three data centers one two three so right now i'm looking for local ha availability set and I don't have any uh, as such with me. I will simply create one. So I'll say new. And I'm just waiting for this pop-up to come over here. And I will give it a I'll give it a name which is which is more readable. So let's say load balancer Southeast Asia availability set like that. Don't worry about that FD UD if you don't know. Uh, if you have some idea about it, that will be great. We discussed about this in the previous webinar. So uh like that uh and data center is already by default getting select selected and what i will do si you can see the sizes from here uh, if i click on all sizes you will notice that we have multiple series in azure d series uh d series version 4 b series a series e f h n uh non-premium uh previous generations and and so and so forth so these series have multiple meanings as such some some machines are more optimized for compute some machines are more optimized for uh, uh you can say memory optimized or or maybe cpu optimized or storage optimized for example the one which i use for uh, machine learning will be n series like that it is having gra uh, nvidia graphic card over there right so uh, whichever series you want you can select it from here and you can always change it afterwards so right now default is d4 version 3 uh, 4 CPU and 16 GB RAM. I am okay with it. So it's the default one anyways. Now I'm putting uh, username and password over here. We really don't need to log in in the machine, but still you need to have local administrator. So that's the username and password I'm putting for local admin. Do I want to open any public port over here? I will be installing the web server inside this. So IS will be installed over here let me put it like this iis so yeah we will be needing port 80 for now uh, http port so basically i will be selecting that one the second one is default rdp something goes wrong i will just go and have a look at it what and we will install something from locally over inside the rdp window and uh, this is how you can open the ports or uh, even you can do this afterwards right now when we talk about licensing I don't have any license with me so it is asking me over here that shivam do you have any license with you i don't have any if i had any and that license was having this option called as hybrid benefit over there i would have got more discount in azure however for now uh, we simply will say that azure you give me the license and if everything is pay as you go so if we delete the virtual machine after 30 minutes you just pay for 30 minutes you don't have to pay for the entirety over there now, if I click on the disk option, I have premium SSD over here. So there are other options as well, but it is so this will be way faster than the HDD one. And we also have the ultra uh, uh, SSD option available, which which goes till uh, around, uh, uh, you can say one lakh 20,000 IOPS as such. So huge number of IOPS will be there. Apart from this, I can add more disk from here. So if I want to create, let's say E E drive or let's say IJK LMNOP so I can add from here and from the advanced option you can select do you want manage disk or do you want unmanage disk so right now I want manage disk I don't want to manage the storage because 
uh, we are talking about compute as as for now so i just let uh, left that to be managed now i'll go into the networking section by default one virtual network will be there and uh, if i simply click on it you will notice that this is the default virtual network which is getting created and it is having 10 series ip address 10.000/24 and we have one subnet also as well with the same uh, same size which which is uh, which is as such over here default subnet and uh, apart from this do you have any load balancer right now we'll be doing it manually so no load balancer as of now you can change all this in the management section we have uh, the monitoring section so boot diagnostics can be enabled in case something goes wrong and you want to go in the boot section and want to have a look at where is the vm stuck so you will get a screenshot and the the, the diagnostic details over there if you keep it enabled which is good um, so let it be default over there and azure active directory and all those the rnt things we can avoid for now but you can see that we have auto shutdown in case you want to start the vm in the morning and want to shut it down in the evening at some particular time all those things are natively inbuilt i don't need to have any other thing which needs to be created everything will be part of the of one form as such backup can be done you can also have operating system patches like do you want azure to uh, you want some or you want your own sscm to be there system center configuration manager or your own patching solution or do you want how do you want to do it all those options were there we will be using this extension option very soon and we have to use it around three times today so extension basically means that once the vms are created if you want to do any post deployment configuration on the vm that's when the vm extension comes into picture we have many type of uh, extensions in azure and if i just show it to you uh, for example you have uh, azure pipeline agents nvidia gpu extensions the one we will be using will be script extension so once the vm is created we'll do some post uh, VM deployment task over there, right? For now, I'll just simply uh, close this tab. I don't want to select anything right now. We'll do it uh, once this is ready, right? So we can also put tag. These are tags are billing concept and very useful for uh, real production. And I'm just quickly clicking on review and create because I have to make this multiple times. So this is my VM number one, which is coming up in the availability set as we discussed in the uh, the diagram over here now that will take around two to three minutes for it to uh, get created now what i'm doing i in your az 104 certification you need to or the administrator need to understand how to do things from both command line and from both uh, gui right so now let's do the same deployment from command line so what are we doing we are deploying the right side virtual machine and this is called as load balancer southeast asia vm number two like that right in the same availability set we will open all the things port 80 and uh, 3389 for rdp but with script right so let me quickly find that script i have it uh, noted down for you guys and if i just read it for you like what are we doing so in the same resource group, if you can notice this, in the same resource group, we are creating the second virtual machine in Southeast Asia and in the virtual network, Southeast Asia RG VNet, I will just confirm that uh, if the name is default correct, or we will come back and we will replace this name. Uh, in the subnet is default uh, as such, and it will get, we will open the ports over there. And that's the same name, which I gave off availability set. So before I run this script, let me just quickly confirm the names like uh, is the name a virtual network is this the default name which is uh, which the previous deployment got or do we have to make any change so i can just go to my resource group and i can just simply confirm that uh, crg vnet is the name of vnet which is the default one so i gave the name in the similar manner and apart from this i just need to understand the name of the nsg uh, this is LB Southeast Asia VM1. Okay, LB Southeast Asia VM1 NSG. So everything is default. I think we can run it. Otherwise, we'll simply come back and have a look at it again. Right. So to run all the scripts, I have this new tab open just so that uh, I don't have to switch between tabs. 
and uh, or do I don't have to close anything. It is asking me for username and password. This is the same thing which we did previously as well in the GUI. I am giving it and it will do that VM creation over here. So this will create the right VM for us. We don't have to wait and look at the VM getting created. It will anyways get created within, uh, I can say one to two minutes. However, we will be making the load balancer in the meantime, right? So let's go and I'll simply click over here. Let's say add part. And you can search over here Azure load balancer. This is so in Azure, we have two type of load balancer. We have network load balancer when we have application gateway, which is application load balancer. Application load balancer is layer seven, which is used for HTTP and HTTPS based route based or path based routing, right? SSL offloading and all that. And the load balancer, which I'm using right now is, is network load balancer. So I basically click on the option on the left hand side. We could have searched it as well. And let's zoom in and we'll click on LB. And uh, let's give it let's, um, any appropriate name will be good. So we are keeping this in Southeast Asia and we are naming it as uh, Southeast Asia VM load balancer. It'll be like that. And it's in Southeast Asia. It will be having public IP address. And this is basic SKU. Uh, standard SKU means that the load balancer will be zone redundant. It will be there in all the three availability set or you can sorry availability zones or this uh, will stretch to all the three data centers in Southeast Asia. For right now, we don't have that requirement because everything is for us. Everything will be in one data center like that. Let me so quickly correct this diagram. Uh, things are in Southeast Asia right over here. Like that. In your certification also, you will get labs as well as theoretical concept. And I prefer doing the uh, hands on lab. It clears the doubt as well, theoretical doubt. So if you are planning for the certification, you want to get started with Azure, do as much hands on as possible. And if you are jo joining us for the uh, for the future training, you will you can expect what we are doing right now will be done there as well. Right. Uh, Shivam, there is a request from Maruti. Uh, we have not covered service principle in our previous session as well. So if you can just uh, throw some light on service principle okay. in Azure, okay. that would be helpful. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Sorry for interrupting. Right. No issues. So what we will do, uh, let me finish this part as soon as we have finished this. I'll tell you about service principle and uh, it's great that you were there in the previous session. Uh, and. Uh, I'll tell you about MSI as well, managed service identity. One more concept, right? You uh, will add something apart from it, All right? So let's finish this and then we'll take it up. Okay, so uh, now public. Uh, so now we don't have to give the public ad address itself. We just have to give it any name over there. So I'm saying that this is my load balancers public IP. And if you are learning it for the first time, you should name it properly. So you can you don't get confused. Now this load balancer will be having one public IP address and the name of that public IP address will be this number or this uh, particular uh, value which I have given. It can be dynamic or static. Dynamic means if I restart the virtual machines, the IP of the load balancer can change. Static means it will never change. Whatever you allocate, it will remain the same. Uh, right now, let's keep it dynamic. We don't have any specific requirement to keep it uh, static right now. And static uh, needs to be managed. So what have I done till now? The LB is ready and this LB is having a public IP over here. This is the public IP right over here. Now what do we haven't added the VMs as part of load balancer. So let's do it right. But the LB uh, is ready uh, sort of the green part is ready, but the endpoints are not done. So let's click on it. So that's how the load balancer interface looks like your Southeast Asia load balancer. And let's just have a look at the is the VM ready. Yeah, so the VM part is done over here, right? And let's go back to the previous tab and we will be clicking on the. So now please guys have a look at this. So we are saying that we want to add both the machines as part of the load balancer. I will click on add and I have to give it a name now. I will simply say that this is, uh, let's say Southeast Asia back end pool. 
back end pool means where the traffic will bifurcate into like so where the traffic is coming from is called as front end pool and the way the traffic goes will be called is called as back end pool in in cloud world as such so the network is by default anyways one is showing over there i think that's the correct one and we will select the virtual machine option and if you click on add you should be we should be able to see both the vms over there vm1 and vm2 so we will simply select both of them and as soon as i click on add and i just say add over here right uh the black line is getting done right now so both the vms are getting added as the endpoint of my uh load balancer so endpoint simply in this scenario means the from uh, where the traffic will go this is the end point like that okay it's not yet done but uh parallelly uh so it will may take couple of seconds for it to finish okay this part is ready now have a look at one more thing which i am doing see it is possible when you have any load balanced scenario you might be having two vms over there or maybe 100 vms over there and some of them might not be healthy but how will the load balancer come to know that the vm is healthy or not it basically knows that with the help of health probe right it keeps on probing those machines so we have tcp and an http uh, an https type of health probes so right now we will be just saying that this is a health for health probe and let's say tcp health probe right so let's let's put it like that and uh, tcp protocol port 80 interval 5 second to unhealthy so if it doesn't get the response so if there are two consecutive unhealthy responses or sorry two uh back to back unhealthy responses or it's not available for two times it basically understands the vm is not there so it doesn't send the traffic to the vm over there so we simply are still in the process of configuring the vms as the endpoint and uh still getting updated so the third thing which we have to do after this this gets done will be the the load balancing rule like traffic is coming on port 80 and do i want to send the traffic on port 80 or not right like that so traffic coming on 80 going on 80 like that so this is called as load balancing rule you can have custom rules also right now i'll be doing 80 80 like that but your application might be running on something else that is basically done from this lb part and i really have to wait for this to update otherwise it will say that it's i'm still updating you cannot change another uh thing over there let me just quickly refresh the page to check it out Uh, is it updated health pro yeah looks like so let's go to lb part load balancing rule and we are putting 80 to 80 so traffic will be hitting on 80 and will go on 80 over there so port 80 is where traffic hits back end port is also 80 both the machines are default selected and we will just say okay there were many more options over there for example sticky sessions were there if you want the traffic to go to the same instance every time uh, and there is a reset period of 30 minutes also so that options were also there now i just realized i haven't installed the is inside the machines i did the load balancer part and the uh, and the port 80 and all that but we don't have anything running on port 80 right so uh, i will simply go and install this is Uh, infrastructure server oh, sorry uh, the is web server over there ias if this was linux we could have gone for any nginx or maybe any other type of web server but we have uh, windows so ias is one of the go to web servers and the good thing which we are doing is we will be doing this with the help of custom script so the extension we talked about that any post vm deployment task can be done with the help of script so we will be doing that part the only thing which you have to remember is that this script needs to be somewhere either you can have the script in github or it it might be in some location which over there it can be pulled over https right so for now i don't have any locations configured so what i am doing i will create one storage account and inside this storage account is where i will put my script right like that and then once it is uploaded i will select that location uh where i will put that script into my vms two times one for the vm on the left one for the right one vm1 and vm2 and with the help of this custom script extension 
uh, IIS will get installed, right? So let's do this. You can have any other location as well, and I feel uh, this may take a couple of more seconds for it to do. But uh, we will come back and check it out. Is it correctly done or not? I feel uh, there are not that there, there, we don't have any more steps over there which may go wrong. So we can have a look at it in some time. So I'm just parallelly creating that storage account and I'll name it as tech scalable Southeast Asia storage, which is in Southeast Asia and HDD based storage account. So I'll just click on create a uh, storage account will take around 30 uh, seconds to get created. In the meantime, let me just quickly go through the questions over there. Right. So inside this storage is where I will be uploading the script. You need any location which can be accessed uh, where we can, uh, you can say, get the script from GitHub will be amazing. For now, I will be just using this and I will upload the uh, the PowerShell script from my laptop into that. So let's go back to the portal. Deployment is done. The VM is uh, the storage is looks okay to me. Let's create one location over there. So we are saying that this is script container and uh, I'll just click on create and inside this script container. I will upload the PowerShell script, which is there in the laptop. I'll just click on it and it's somewhere in my desktop as such. Yeah, I think that that was the one and uh, great. So this is that PowerShell script. Right now, what are we, what we will do? We will go to the VM tabs and we will select the same script for the post creation uh, deployment. So let's do that. So you will see me do this two times. I could have done this from PowerShell as well, but that would have been so automated that if you are new, then it, it might not have made sense. So I'm doing it little manually here. So this is my VM one and I just want to click on the, you see the setting option. We have extensions over there. And as part of extensions, I will click on add and I want to go for custom script extension and I will click on create and I will just select the same storage account, which we just used in the previous tab. So it is saying that do you have any storage account? I'll say, yeah, I have it over here script and that's the uh, PowerShell script install IAS PowerShell like that, right? So let's just say, okay. And okay. And this is initialized for deployment. So IAS will be will be getting installed as we are speaking, right? Uh, let's not wait for it to do. We will be installing IAS on the other machine also, right? So let's do this one more time. So if you have not, if you are not able to follow me, let's do it again over there for the other one, right? Now, how do you use the extension option? You basically have to go to the VM. This is the VM and let me zoom out, right? And in the VM, you have in the simply in the overview column over here, you have this extensions, right? Click on it and click on add after that. Once you do this, scroll down and search custom script extension over here and click on create and select the location where it is available from. So let's say storage account for now. Uh, oh, sorry. I clicked on create a storage. So let me go one tab back and we already have the storage with the script and it's in the in this container called a script that's the script All right and let's select it okay and okay so what have i done i uh, just to recall and revise what the steps which we have done till now we created this storage account and inside this storage account we uploaded the script which we had uh, and i created one container over there called a script container like that and inside that i uploaded it so the script i was selecting is this uh, container option and uh, IIS is getting installed right now. We will come back to this within a couple of minutes to check out is it working out or not. So before we go into the bigger active active architecture, uh, we will we would like to have a local testing. So we will come back in five minutes and we will see that are we able to hit the machines or not. But we don't have to wait for it as we were talking about. Right. So this is my first uh, active scenario in East US. Now I am deploying, sorry, in Southeast Asia. Now 
I am deploying the second part of my. See, if you have global customers, uh, they are distributed globally as such. And imagine for now that you have customers in East US and Southeast Asia. So you need some solutions in both the location. So one solution is on the left hand side, and the second one is what I am creating now, or what you will see me create, right? So we will be deploying one virtual machine scale set like that vm scale set and virtual machine scale set is auto scaling concept meaning it will automatically scale in scale out based on the requirement so before i tell you more about the scale set i will just click on it because it takes some time to get created right and then i will be coming back and i'll tell you what have i done so everything now will be in east us and in the same rg over there so have a look at this right so now because the most of the deployment is done post uh, uh, post the scale set creation so the scale set part i i am doing with the help of one small script which i have so you will notice that we are cre creating virtual machine scale set in east us rg in east us and uh, name we can give it tech scalable east us vmss it one new network will get created called as my vnet and one subnet will be there called as my subnet and uh, basically public ip address will be there and uh, we will be having this load balancer and upgrade policy will be uh, automatic over there so let me just go back come over here and uh, go to my tab from where i'm writing the running the script and it is asking me for username and password i'm giving it right now right so it is getting created right now okay so the vmss is coming up guys this part so let's talk about what we just did right uh, so now virtual machine scale set is auto scaling this uh, you can and the load balancer will be there by default you can also go for layer 7 load balancer called as application gateway right now as i am speaking one virtual machine will be there as part of my scale set and i will be putting two rules over there one rule will be scale out rule and scale out rule means that if the cpu goes more than 70% uh, create more vms so if the load increases imagine uh, there is some sale started uh, as such or maybe uh, anyone in the uh, you remember elon musk he, uh, he simply tweeted for signal and the servers of signal crashed because the entire load went there uh, i'm not sure what how much of scaling they had but uh, so here we can have auto scaling in place right so if cpu is more than 70 percent it will automatically create more instances you can have other matrices as well it's not that only cpu based matrices will be there so i will be putting one rule there that scale out if cpu is more than 70 percent uh, create two vms every time for me let's say every five minutes create two vms if load increases and how many maximum vms can it have uh, the maximum number can be 1000 right now I, we don't need that much right so we will put some appropriate number maybe thousand or uh, let's say 100 or 200 uh, so those many vms can it it will go up to you may not be requiring the all thousand over there right so this can be done now simple similarly you will also need to uh, simply contrast this rule with another rule called a scale in rule meaning if the cpu goes less than some particular uh, let's say bottom line over there then delete some vms for you right remove some vms or delete some vms so let's say delete two vms per five minutes and uh, minimum number of vms we can have can be as less as one or two so let's say one vm will be there minimum like that uh, scale down to minimum so automatically scale out scale in so what will happen uh, if you if you do this right okay that's great so now if you do this basically uh, this is my uh, if the rule is hit the second vm will get created and so and so forth i can have 200 more vms over there 
based on my configuration right now what we will be doing we will also be installing iis inside this as well so that will become like the web server which we have so one two uh, three and so on and so forth uh, as many machines as many instances we are not concerned about all of them we'll just set it once it will get happen every time so for uh, again we will create one storage account we will upload the script over there now fyi i will not be able to use the previous storage account to upload the script because uh, the customs does the script or the storage account which is in the same region can be detected if i use any other method for example if i take the https url of the previous one and give it in the script over here then it will work but to select it from the gui i really have to make storage account here again right that one thing if i would have done it from script i could have avoided but to show it to you guys we will be doing it in this manner so script will be uploaded there and we will run it inside the bmss okay so let's do this now uh, let me go back right so vmss is ready and as we were discussing that we just want to check out is the load balancer part good enough uh, or not like is it running or not even i am curious like before i go to the end of all the things and come back and start troubleshooting i just want to have a look at it is it working in modular manner or not so i will simply look for the uh, the load balancer somewhere here and i will just copy the ip address of it and uh, that looks like the ip of it and we'll put it in the browser and we'll have a look at it is it individually working or not so you can see that this is load balancer southeast asia vm1 we are able to open it right i'll put this ip in the chat window in case you want to hit it you will either land on my vm number 1 or you will either land on vm number 2 over there right it's in the chat you can try it out and you can let me know in the chat window which one did you land it on vm1 or vm2 so 50 50% it should uh, bifurcate now uh, coming back to the vmss by now we just have one instance over there uh, what do we need to do we will be creating the scaling rule now scaling rule and parallelly i want to install the uh, these uh, uh, is over there right so is will be taking around 3 4 minutes to get installed so i'll do that part first and once that part is going on i will be doing the scale out rule or scale in rule which is there right so let's do it so i'm creating the storage account now and do we really need to do the storage account again uh, from the um, from the gui not really so let's do the other part from the script so i am creating this uh, if you can see so in the location east us in the resource group called as east us rg uh, we will be using the same uh, uh, resource group uh, i i could have we can uh, we can remove this line and we will create one storage account over here and this storage account will be called as east us storage and standard lrs is just a uh, locally redundant storage and we will be creating one for, uh, one container called as script over there so exactly the thing which we did before in southeast asia we are doing in us also and uh, right so let's give it couple of seconds to run and as we are speaking uh this is getting created over here we will have one container script over there and we will be uploading from the laptop we will be uploading the is uh, file there as well right so 30 seconds so done let's go and have a look at it right so if i zoom out and go to my storage account i should see one more now sometimes this happens like you do things from script but the gui refreshes in 10 seconds so i'm just refreshing my full page just to get the value back from the fabric controller and uh, still i have to wait for some time yeah now it's visible you see this one this one so we'll click on that one and we will simply wait for we'll click on container we should see one container here we i just deployed that from the powershell right script and i will upload my is script again there and uh, okay 
so script uploaded great now what are we doing we will go to uh, vm scale set and we will be putting uh, we will be doing the same thing which we did before so with the help of script we will install iis over there right so let's do that part right let's do this part so you just we just have to go to the resource group and we'll go to the one which is in east us and we will simply look for this one that's the name we'll click on it so this is the auto scaling vm scale set and let's scroll down we are looking for extension option okay that's the one and we can use the same extension called as custom script extension we'll click on it we'll scroll up we'll say create and uh, now i will click on extensions and that's the us one you can see the other one is not visible right now right as we were discussing it out and i'll just select it for now uh, that's the powershell script okay great okay and done 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 so it is getting installed you can see over here so basically it should take around uh, maybe around uh, three to five minutes first the extension will be installed then it will pull the script from this location will install it locally and it will verify that like is it done or not so it should take around five minutes we don't have to wait for it so what i'm doing as we all already discussed that we will be creating the rules for auto scaling so we will create one scale out rule and we will create one scale in rule right and uh, let's do it so zoom out and i will simply look for the scale option it's it's over here scaling in vmss and i will simply i i think i should just zoom out only it seems to be popping in and out of zoom so maybe looking very odd over there so i think let's keep it like this and a uh, custom rule over here and i will simply scroll down i'll say add rule so the scale out rule which we talked about will be like uh, if 70% average cpu is there then create more vms like more if if more load comes so average percentage cpu is more than 70% is great it's by default set as well is 70% for duration of let's say 5 minutes so if there is load for 5 minutes more than 70% then increase the count of machines by two instances every every 5555 minutes let's say add and then we will put another rule this is the reverse rule like if it if something scales out then it should scale in also right so this time we are saying percentage cpu is uh let's say less than over here so if nobody is using the infrastructure then why to keep it running so less than 40% for 5 minutes then decrease the count uh let's say by 2 to 2 vms right every time and this also brings me to that your solution should be stateless right if you have any stateful application the state should be ma maintained outside the vmss we don't put databases here right never so uh minimum and maximum so let's put 200 vms maximum upper limit will be uh, 1000 uh, over here so i'll just say save and uh, now this may contradict with the update which we previously did let's see the scale set if it says that i cannot do two update at the same time then we may have to do this in couple of minutes let's just wait for this to save and if not because ias is already getting is, is getting installed right now as we are speaking right it's done so i think there is no issue so uh, the scale rule is also set now i'll i'll bring you like why are we doing and what are we doing right it's big infrastructure that we are creating uh, i have two active sites for you now uh, i'm coming to the main uh, main part right so things are uh, coming up over here as well in uh, east us now see when you have global globally distributed customers so we may require some sort of dns management over there or part of application delivery net uh, in networking we have application delivery services one of the service which we have is called as traffic manager so now i'm coming to the where every all the architecture comes together i am deploying 
one central uh, service over here called as traffic manager global service like that if you guys know what is f5 load balancer uh, in f5 load balancer we have G uh, gtm right uh, global traffic management this is that in f5 if you're coming from aws in route 53 we have this functionality in, in aws so we will be deploying one traffic manager now uh, traffic manager profile the full name is like that and we will be putting both the endpoints as part of this traffic manager right if you are thinking then why did i used load balancer in um, in c server and why did we used scale set because we had two two topics to cover so we just merged it together it's not that you need to have scale set in one side load balancer it's just auto scaling on the right side in us and manual scaling on the left hand side in southeast asia so with the help of this traffic manager we will be doing some dns routing over there dns routing so the the, the scenario is something like this see the customers are globally distributed and right now you guys are joining from the entire from all over the globe as well so what will happen imagine that's where you are all of you are there right uh, there will be one link which i will put in the chat window it will be one url right like one url will be there and you guys will open your laptop like that and you will hit the url so what will happen those who are closer to to southeast asia for example right now i am in india bangalore so southeast asia is ideally closer to me so what ha will happen if this uh, this one is let's say me over there so if i am closer to southeast asia uh, we will be putting over here one solution called as performance like that let's say performance based routing so because i am closer to southeast asia from my laptop finally when the traffic http traffic will flow it will flow directly from my browser to the endpoint so what traffic manager will do it will route me to the location which is giving me least latency so the performance based routing will be will route you to the location that will give you least latency so least latency will be best performance best turnaround time so those of you who are near who are in us right now or maybe near us you will resolve in the other endpoint the way we have configured the infrastructure uh, when you hit the vm you will see the name over there you will realize either you are in us or either you are in southeast asia right now so this traffic manager is what i am creating right now and i'll tell you more details about it on the way right this one that's what we are doing as now so one traffic manager and after traffic manager i will be adding both the endpoints over there just for my peace of mind i just want to have a look at is the uh, is individually vms is working or not right before i do the global solution let me locally check it out like is it uh, working or not so let's go back and let's have a look at this oh it's still it's still installing it so we cannot test it right now uh, we will come back and we'll check it out so let's go ahead then let's do the traffic manager part so one global solution and i will simply go to my any of the resource group is good enough now so i am in us uh, resource group i'll click on add and i'm searching for traffic manager and this is my traffic manager profile i'll click on create right so let's give it any name of our choice so this is tech scalable traffic manager profile the name needs to be globally unique so i'm putting over there just to make sure it is unique and performance based routing and uh, this one is in east us let me okay so let me see i was thinking of putting this in the other one okay yeah now it's fine it was not loading it properly and i thought that in the starting i uh, made the us rg in southeast asia i just thought that but it looks okay to me it, it was not loaded i just refreshed it sort of changed it now it looks fine okay so one traffic manager is coming up this one the purple one now guys there are a couple of steps i will be doing 
and uh, please check this out one step which i will be doing is to the ip address which we have of the load balancer we will be giving one dns name why is it required because traffic manager uh, is a dns routing service it needs everyone to have D dns url as such so i will be uh, adding a sort of a name record over there like url to ip address so that's one thing you will see me do secondly on the right hand side i actually haven't opened port 80 right now right so there is one network over here which we haven't talked about but network is always there at the back end you can see this one over here let's color it with let's say yellow over here right so in this uh, network we haven't opened uh, port 80 or anything like that so that part needs to be done otherwise we will not be able to check it out right neither local testing neither global testing so uh, two things you will see me do first is i will i'll give one dns name to the ip address because traffic manager works like that why am i not giving it on the right hand side because in the script i already gave it uh, so this one is already having it so there is one dns name which is label which is already attached with this public ip address like that so but i haven't done this for the left hand side so let's do it i'll go to the southeast asia load balancer and i will try to find the ip address which should be in the resource group so i'll come one step back and i will zoom in and i will just arrange them in order so yeah that's the one we named it properly so we can find it now and in this one we'll click on configuration and i'm giving it a name so let's give it something which we can understand afterwards so this is the dns label now attached so you can hit the load balancer with the ip along with you can also hit the load balancer with the this dns name which will be there right so i'm saving it and parallelly on the other side i have to create that uh, i have to open port 80 and couple of things needs to be done so what have i done i have one script with me which help me out when uh, some things needs to be done so what this script is doing as we are speaking it will open port 80 over here in the network security group attached to the subnet uh, you can imagine this is the subnet inside the network vnet uh, it will open port 80 over there that's what it will do so we are all good let's go to uh, traffic manager right and let's click on the endpoints uh, let's make the endpoints we haven't done it right so let's do that part and let me quickly check out is my scale set working fine or not do you need some attention from me right now or is it everything all good so i'll just go and have a look at my scale set we haven't checked it like so this is the us one and is it okay so it is still installing the is extension over there so let me just verify something and in the extension section is everything okay so it is yeah successfully installed i think it was just waiting for me to have a look at it now successfully install the extension so i will just show it to you how scale set looks same there is no difference as such but you will notice that uh, that's how the scale set vm will look like uh, let me hit it you see this i think the name was very big so it's just saying tech scala like that but tech scalable so this is one of the vm which i have in the vmss right so we have done the local testing over there locally it is working fine let's do the global one now so traffic manager is ready by now we will go to it we will put performance based routing over there we will add left and right over there both of them as endpoint i will put the url in the chat window those of you who are near southeast asia will hit my lb vms and those who are near us will hit the one which is the scale set vms so you will read the names which is something like that you will realize from where you are getting best performance now these things are actually uh, the performance over here is actually more 
in idle scenarios it may be possible because of some any congestion somewhere you may land in another location but uh, in idle scenario that should not happen so let's go to traffic manager and this is my traffic manager the purple color solution and i will simply click on endpoint and this is my endpoint over here and we will create southeast asia endpoint and uh, we will add public ip and we will select the one which is saying southeast asia load balancers public ip that's the one we want to be the endpoint and the other one if i okay i just have to wait for the previous one to save but if i click on the other one this one will be east us uh, vmss endpoint so the ip address uh, which one is the correct ip address i think i didn't give a good name so 35 okay so this is the one this is the ip address of my uh, vmss over there in southeast asia how do i know because i just saw it from this tab it was written there and uh, right so let's add it so as we are speaking what happened in the traffic manager both of them are getting added as endpoint i have uh, left and right side right this, this so this is one of the see traffic managers another solution by which you can create global solution i can have many more infrastructure created i can have active passive scenario or i can have uh, active active scenario this is active active right now and you will be routed to the location which is nearby i am buying some time for to let the traffic manager do the health check and i think it may do it any second now you see this health check so it will probe the uh, endpoints and basically it will find whether the endpoints are healthy or not we may have to wait for a couple of minutes for that to happen but uh, let me just quickly try this out is it already done or do we ha really have to wait so it's already done uh, over here so i am in uh, bangalore india southeast asia is near to me so you can see i am in load balancer vm2 i am putting this link in the chat window uh, right you guys can click it and check out which location is near to you and which is serving from where you are getting uh, served from so those who are near so based on least latency principle either you will end up in us or in southeast asia check it out and this is the demo which i had uh, the, the long demo which i had for uh, az104 and uh, please do that part and i will simply bring you back to the slide deck so let me know which part have you reached uh, Shivam, we are almost done with the time. So there were a lot of questions with respect to the exam. What sort of questions come? What's the time duration? How many questions? So if we can spend some time on the certification part, that would be really good for them. Right. So guys, uh, check this out. So uh, when we talk about certification path, uh, there is, see, learning should be step by step. Uh, so if you think about certification there are multiple entry points and then you can create a career path so the very first certification in, in microsoft is az 900 so if you are new i recommend you go for it otherwise the next step will be very difficult to jump for right so that's the first initial entry point second certification which is there is what we are talking about right now 104 right administrator certification uh, and those who are developer very soon we'll have webinars for developers as well so we have az204 for that so this is the second step now from microsoft there is no recommendation that you should go in any step by step manner like that but i personally prefer that when you do don't do things step by step it's difficult to grasp for the first time if you are an expert then it, it's a different thing but i recommend you go for one uh, let's say az900 then one uh, let's say 104 or maybe you go for 204 and once you have done that, you can converge into uh, the architect level certifications which are there, which is basically AZ-303 and we have AZ-304. So we also have upcoming sessions on that. Mamta will help us out with that part. So these are architect level certification. Now, from the point of view of certification, what uh, type of questions will be there? Around 180 minutes will be given to you 
uh, if I put it something like this over here, 180 minutes, around 55 questions will be there and multiple choice question labs will be there. You have to perform them. Uh, single answer question, multiple answer question, drag and drop, compl uh, complete the right answer, uh, arrange in the right sequence, diagram based questions will be there, case studies will be there. So in the architect level certification and over here as well, you will get scenarios. You have to read the scenario and based on the scenarios, you have to answer five to nine questions. So uh, basically the passing certificate marks will be 700 out of 1000 and there is no negative marking which is the standard pattern which they use. So those who are, do, those who want to, let's say, learn further, AZ 900, uh, uh, let's say 104, 204, AZ 900 is the first initial step, which is over here. Uh, we also have certification, which is based on security, AZ 500. For DevOps, you can go for AZ 400. And when we talk, we just talked about 300 and 304, that's the solution architect on Azure. Now, one of the questions which I generally get from participant is that can we directly go for solution architect? The problem is uh, that in 104 or 204, we learn a lot of services, either from administration point of view or from development point of view, but a lot of services are there. And in 300 and 303, 303 and 304, the solution architect one, we really have to create the architectures now. You have to discuss the case study. You have to understand how to create that active, 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 passive. Now, I sometimes I get participants, half of them are on the level of, uh, let's say, already architects as such. So they might be able to grasp those high level concepts directly. Otherwise, I personally uh, also prefer going uh, first for 104 or the one which we'll have in future 204. And then go for any other architect level certification so you can ask the right question also asking the right question is also very important right so what really are we talking about then we also have uh, data scientist certifications ai 100 which is a, a chatbot we create chatbots over there we also have dp200 and 201 and there is another new one which is coming up dp203 which is the merger of these both we will have that very soon this is where big data comes into picture, uh, data uh, spark, Hadoop, and so on and so forth. We also have uh, data analyst Power BI certifications. And uh, those who are going in the data track we or AI track, it's recommended that you either go for the data platform fundamentals or AI platform fundamentals. So this is what we have as the certification training path. And uh, I would like to hand over to Mamta over here and we have upcoming webinars from uh, in next couple of uh, uh, from February 9th. So Mamta, if you can tell everyone more about yeah. the webinars which we have planned. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shiva. It was really a wonderful session. A lot of people have asked good questions. I think we have missed one or two questions which Shiva has mentioned in the WhatsApp. Maybe we can pick up the questions from the WhatsApp later as well. So guys, don't worry in case your questions are not answered and you're part of the WhatsApp group or you're connected to us on LinkedIn. Anytime, feel free to post us any questions. And we have started doing webinars from Jan 2021. This is the second in the series. And next webinar planned is on February 9th, which is on AZ 400, which I would be presenting. We would be learning about uh, CI/CD pipeline, uh, how to uh, use Git and then Azure repos. And uh, we would be showing up the entire CI/CD pipeline presentation. So it would be a complete hands-on type of session in case you're interested to do along with us, then you can uh, come along with an Azure account and we can guide you through that entire flow. Yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for showing a lot of patience and uh, being there till the end. In case you have any questions, do post us. In case you're not connected to us via WhatsApp, you can uh, post a message on LinkedIn. We are quite uh, like fast on LinkedIn. You will get a prompt answer. And we have our YouTube channel. If you wish, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You would find all the webinar uh, recordings over there. So uh, if we are good, we should, uh, we, we can end the session. So thanks a lot.
Thanks, Shivam. And thanks, Gopal, at the back end. She was responding to the messages. Hope you people come back for our next session, which would be our AZ400. So thank you, guys.